is a fabulous day and I'm glad that you're here with me, keeping me focused because I'm way excited that I get to pot up by Lelia Briagheri. It has been since May 2021 and we are now at the end of March that I have been babying this orchid in her fancy snazzy Greek yogurt tub because she came with no roots to speak of and she has been growing new growths continuously throughout this time in her greek yogurt tub and now lo and behold roots oh well root um maybe there's another one i think i saw another one on the update video somewhere back here but uh, <clears throat> one root and i am going to pot this up even though i only have one root seeing as eventually the warmer temperatures will come and I can then leave her outside and hopefully get her established in a semi-hydro setup. And I've got all my media here to the left. We'll talk through that. But what I wanted to discuss with you is I have a problem when it comes to uniformity. <laughs> That's why all my pots are in white. And on top of that, I have certain pots that I really want to have my Rapiculus Lelias in. Now, uh, you can see the pot in the back here is Lelia Crispata, and she is in the same pot size as would be this one right here. And you can see that the leaf shape and size and growth structure of the Briageri is the same as the Crispata, so it would be a perfect match for me to put her into this large pot, because then they would look cohesive, right? Makes sense. <laughs> However, with all the things that are going on at this moment, I don't have enough pots so I can take one away. These pots, I have four of them with inserts, so it'll be a self-watering setup. And I bought them back in the day for a reason that I, at this point I can't remember, but I have four sets of this as self-watering. I cannot forfeit one because I don't know if the nursery is going to get another one in to replace this one if I put it into a semi-hydro and pot my Brigari in there. <laughs> so unfortunately, we are going to continue with the square theme, but in a pot size that's a bit smaller that really doesn't match what I'm trying to do here. Needs must. It's a pot. It's beautiful. It's square. It's white. And it is already prepped for semi-hydro. And my Brigari is going to go in there, even though I would prefer that large size. Why the long intro? Well, because if you've been following my channel, you also know why I put orchids into oversized pots, even though the Rapiculus Lelias should be in small fetched pots. And that is because of the root potential. A vigorous orchid, I don't want to disturb it. That is a Rapiculus Lelia. They hate being disturbed. So I go up a pot size. I am in completely inorganic media. I can afford to do that because I will not be disturbing this orchid for decades as far as I'm concerned, bar anything that needs radical interference. The root system on these larger green lush Rapiculus Lelias is very, very vigorous. And for that reason, the pot looks oversized, but it is the root system I am interested in just to leave it alone. Now, unfortunately for my Brigari, that is not going to happen. I will be able to leave this orchid, of course, in this pot for a decade if I chose to do so. And that will be absolutely fine. But you see where I'm coming from. It just doesn't all match the optics. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Not because there's anything wrong with it. Anyway, jibber jabber aside, I also have some crocking because I don't want to waste all the space down here with Akadama and Grit Mix, possibly some Ceramis. We'll have to wait and see. But I have some really nasty looking Lekka that I picked out of a Lekka bag. It's been sterilized, boiled, rinsed, etc. It's been treated just the same, even though it's the nasty stuff. But it's going in one of my pots for one of my Rapiculus Lelias. For that reason, it gets the same cleaning treatment as if it were surface and general potting media. Let's see how much I need of this. All of it will do all of it great that was perfect you see i've just covered the holes that's all i want from this one now seeing as my orchid doesn't have any roots let's see if i can't get you in a little bit higher and over and avoid my mic getting close to the transmitter because i don't want the crackling i have been noticing crackling in my videos i don't like it i'm working on it so i'm just going to try and stay away from that transmitter 
So anyway, here's the crocking, that's done. Now the idea is, because I have a very hot, dry climate, here in southern Spain it gets very, very hot and very, very dry. Yay for me, boo for the orchids, not good. I go with a very high water retentive media so that I can just flush through and let them be on their way and let them grow. So what you see is probably very unconventional. The leca is there for crocking. I could do a whole full semi-hydro setup with just leca. I've done that with Rapiculus lelias, the bigger ones at least, and they did very, very well. But I want something a little bit more water retentive, seeing as she's new, and to protect her from the hot climate that I experience here, in case I can't keep up with the watering, because once it's go time for these guys, they are vigorous. You can see all the new growths. It grew while it was in a Greek tub. So more of the same, now it's going in a pot. I like to put my label in sooner rather than later because I don't want to be jiggling the orchid around. Now, I'm going to just keep that label by the holes. I always put it by my semi-hydro holes so I know where the holes are. And if I have to move the orchid from the shelf, I avoid any kind of spilling and making a mess all over the place. So I've got that. Now in here I have Akadama. And this Akadama I've mixed with terrarium grit. Just because the Akadama is so water retentive, I need to break it up a little bit. I think I have enough to top it up to the top, but I'm also somewhat guessing that I may need some ceramis, which I will probably do right at the base because we're layering so that the wicking can go up from the bottom all the way to the top. So I'm going to just put some ceramis in here preemptively just to raise the level even further. And then we're going to check the orchid level. I'm putting her also in the middle because all directions of growth are happening here. <laughs> so that's pretty easy. Put her in the middle at a little bit lower because I will be having to back up with some lava rock. So I'm liking this height. And that's what we'll top up with. Akadama and grit. The only reason, because this is my next layer of wicking, to make sure that the water stays nice and evenly distributed throughout the pot. There we go. Let's flatten that out and see where we're at. I like my little media bar. Makes everything very convenient. Okay. That is looking just about right. Now it gets to the fiddly part because clearly she is not going to be stable in the pot. Just raise my label up now while I still have her in such a way that I don't jiggle too much. And the root is not long enough for me to be doing any damage and I like it that way. That's why I'm going to do this now instead of waiting for more roots. And to keep her stable, I'm really, really calculating whether I want to put in bamboo skewers or not, because actually I don't really like the look. Needs must sometimes, but I personally don't like the look. Or if I should just fill up and around with plain little lava rock. And that's what I'm going to do. If it doesn't work, I'll be picking off the lava rock and doing it with the bamboo skewers. So here I have medium to small sized lava rock. I want a top layer that is drier than what is underneath the orchid. The reason being, any new growths that grow, of course, shouldn't be always touching something that is as wet as Akadama and grit. I think this may just work. And also, I would have put in the bamboo skewers sooner before the top dressing of lava rock, because I don't want to be stabbing around blindly trying to position my orchid and the bamboo skewers as it's trying to get through the media. It can all get a little bit messy and it's just too much moving around. The idea being once the orchid is in, she is in. Now at this point, she's already settled and stable in the pot. I can feel it. And seeing as we're busy with root growth, there won't be any new growth starting per se at this point in time. The growths here, they have as yet to mature. So I can be a bit more generous around the base of the orchid and have the lava rock a little bit higher, helping me with more stability even. And then eventually I keep an eye on my orchid and see if new growths are coming just to make sure that they are not being quetched out. And this is looking good. Very, very good. And no bamboo skewers. Woohoo! Love it. 
And now you can see why I have the tag in here because imagine trying to get a tag in while you're messing around keeping an orchid nice and stable. And I have all my layers that I need. My orchid is pretty secure. This is great. And I am going to now get myself some plain RO water and flush her through. And then I'll explain why I do that. Now the orchid was wet enough at the base, as you could see, there really shouldn't be any reason for me to water her in. There was plenty of humidity around there for the new root, but all my media is super, super dry. And when it comes to Akadama and Ceramis, I prefer to work with them when they're dry because they will fall where I want them to fall instead of sticking around on my fingers or in the pot. And it's very hard for me to maneuver it. You saw how easily it just fell into place. So I want to get that media wet and sort of water the orchid in. The second reason is that Akadama is super, super dusty. Even though it's been washed, all the little dust has been removed from it and then it's been dried. But every time you handle Akadama, there's so much more erosion around those little pellets that it gets dustier again over time. And I want to make sure that I see clear water running out of the semi-hydro holes. Let me get a better angle. There we go. Because this orchid is going to be in here for a very, very long time. Akadama being clay obviously will last indefinitely, especially in my climate. You see, Akadama will not break down quickly in adverted commas, which could be two to three years, unless it has to go through freezing temperatures. I don't have freezing temperatures here, so I'm expecting the longevity of my Akadama to be as long lasting as I want that orchid in the pot. But I'm going to check the color of the water. And if it comes out brown, you can see it's not very clear. I'm just going to keep checking that, letting it drain out. It's as clear as I've ever seen it with Akadama, which is great. That means the Akadama that was in there wasn't as bad as I thought it might be. But Akadama breaking down will make the water go murky. And that is why I'm looking that my water runs clear so that in the years to come, I can monitor the status of the Akadama in the pot. Once again, I'm expecting at least 10 years out of my Akadama. Seeing as I don't have a climate that freezes, I'm expecting a long time that my Akadama will last. And once the roots also hit the Ceramis and the Leka down there, it's just going to be a doddle. That is the plan. I am super excited about my Brigeri being now in a pot. We have been doing this song and dance with the Greek yogurt tub since May 2021. She has graduated and you can see my water is running much, much clearer now. And that's where I'm going to leave it at. And I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. Super excited. I am repeating myself, I know. And I appreciate your patience with me and for tolerating my maybe OTT enthusiasm. But huh? internally, I'm doing cartwheels around my patio. Woohoo! graduation day. I love it. Thank you so much for your time. Have yourselves a beautiful day. That condition remains though that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.